people love definitive answers. We really want to have a clear understanding of everything we see, art historians especially so. But people also love to make things. We love to make art. And one of the oldest works of art in the world, yet found, is a small female figurine that's sometimes simply called female nude, but is still universally known as the Venus of Willendorf, a name that makes no sense whatsoever, but really speaks to the lens that our culture looks through. She acquired the name Venus when she was found in 1908 in a village in Austria called Willendorf. She's only about 11 centimeters high, and she dates from about 25,000 years ago. So she's really old. And in the museum in Vienna, where we're looking at her in the Natural History Museum, they've shrouded her in darkness in a glass case illuminated from above. The outside looks like a Greek temple, and on it, it says, Venus of Willendorf. And in fact, in the temple, there's a little button, because remember, this is a science museum. Lots of kids, and kids love to push buttons. And when they do, the white light on the figurine turns red, and a little flute music starts. Now, of course, we have no idea if these people listen to music, what that music would have been. It's really an attempt to fill in all the gaps. We know almost nothing about her. We don't know why she was made, who made her. What we have is the figure and virtually no context. It is in some ways an anthropological object rather than an art object. By giving her the name of an ancient Greek goddess, the goddess of love, Venus, we were assigning meaning to her, a meaning of her being a goddess figure and somehow associated with fertility. Now, we have no reason to believe any of that is true. I suppose we do have a little bit more context, and that is, this is only one of quite a number of female figures that have been found from this era. This is during the last Ice Age, and it's some of the first figural sculpture that we've seen. What's interesting is that almost all of the sculptures that have been found have been female figures. We should say all the figures that have been found so far are female figures, and they're nude, but they're of different shapes. Some exaggerate the breasts and buttocks, but others are thin. But maybe in 10 years or 100 years, art historians and archaeologists will find male figures. So all of this is guesswork. All we've got to look at is the figure itself. Let's take a close look. She has no feet and very thin arms, which she rests high up on her breast and she has no facial features. That's consistent with almost all of the figures from this period that have been found. There is a careful rendering of the hair, or perhaps a woven hat that's on her head. Some archaeologists have suggested that this might be a reed hat that she wears. Oh, there's the music and the red light. That's right, a small girl has just pushed the button. The hands are articulated ever so slightly, defining the fingers. And archaeologists who've looked at this carefully have suggested that perhaps the exaggeration of the stomach and of the breasts and of the head, the sort of bulbous shapes throughout, are partially a result of the natural shape of the stone. This is a limestone object. She's symmetrical and is clearly not something that was meant to stand up. As you mentioned, there were no feet, but this is a figure that would easily fill a hand. And you have the sense that this is something that was meant to be held. Carried in a pocket, perhaps, something like that. She does fit comfortably in a hand. We know that she was originally painted with ochre paint, a kind of red paint. Beyond that, it's really hard to say much more. So we'll continue to be fascinated by it. Art historians will continue to try to find answers. But in some ways, I'm sure we'll always fall into the trap of reflecting our own interests and our own needs as we try to understand this object. I'm not sure that we'll ever fully understand it or be able to retrieve its original meanings. No.